you'll be familiar with the stories. Periods of forced isolation during pandemics of the past have served as catalysts for enormous artistic and scientific feats. During a bubonic plague outbreak, William Shakespeare composed some of his best sonnets and plays. A century later, during the Great Plague, Isaac Newton developed his most influential theories and soon after was promoted to professor. The lesson is clear. Use your time wisely and you too can achieve greatness. Of course, there are other lessons to be learned during pandemics. To name a few, phonics, long division, how to drown out the wiggles singing Big Red Car whilst composing an email and whipping up a souffle. Now, William and Isaac did not have to concern themselves with these sorts of details during their isolations. You see, Isaac had his mother, Hannah Acecow, to manage the farm to which he retreated to think about why apples land on heads. And William had his wife, Anne Hathaway, not the actress, different Anne, to look after their three children in Stratford-upon-Avon whilst he wrote poems in London. Yes, when it came to the choice between isolating with or sans family, Bill went for option B. Centuries later, in our current pandemic, while the stories of William and Isaac get trotted out in every How to Live Your Best ISO Life blog, Hannah and Anne, well, they're the forgotten characters, aren't they? Anyway, this is not a talk about undervalued and uncompensated domestic labour roles. It very well could be, but it is not. This is also not a talk about the underrepresentation of women in art and science. Again, it very well could be, but it is not. No, this is a talk about mice. Well, mice and rats. Okay, to be completely inclusive, this is a talk about mice, rats and ferrets. Let me wind it back a bit. Right now, the world is anxiously awaiting a COVID vaccine. With sport temporarily ceased, the race to be the nation that successfully immunises the world against COVID is the next best thing. So how does one go about developing a vaccine? Well, it all begins with the humble lab rat or mouse, or in the case of COVID vaccines, as it turns out, ferrets. Medicine is based on animal models. And while there are big questions that can and should be asked about whether this approach is the best way for dealing with human disease or whether it is even moral, it is the reality in which we live and have lived for centuries that preclinical models of human disease using non-human animals allow us to very quickly test hypotheses about why diseases emerge and how to prevent or even treat them. The next step is to test the most promising interventions in human clinical trials for safety and for efficacy. Does the intervention prevent or treat the condition successfully without causing more harm than good? And the upshot of this whole process is that when you receive a vaccine or take an antibiotic or antidepressant medication for heart disease, you assume that the treatment will be both safe and effective for you, right? Unfortunately for women, this assumption is very often false. You see, the vast majority of preclinical research is conducted solely using male animals. This was demonstrated most compellingly by researchers from Berkeley, who surveyed over 2,000 animal studies conducted in 2009 and determined that males were studied more frequently than females in eight out of 10 biological disciplines. Most alarmingly, Males were being studied more frequently than females, even for medical conditions that occur more frequently in women than in men. Women have more strokes that lead to greater functional impairment than men, yet only a third of animal research on stroke uses females. Chronic pain-related conditions are twice more prevalent in women than men, yet less than 10% of animal studies on pain use females. My own area of research is anxiety disorders, which are the fourth leading cause of disease burden in Australia and impact 10% of Australian men 
and 20% of Australian women in a given year. Despite women being twice as likely to require treatment for anxiety disorders than men, less than 10% of animal research on how to treat anxiety uses females. And what happens when this research from mostly male animals gets tested in human clinical trials, which typically contain a mix of men and women? Well, most clinical trials fail to conduct even a cursory examination of sex differences in safety or efficacy. And the irony is, when scientists fail to consider how treatments operate differently in men and women, we all lose, every one of us. For women, we are 1.5 times more likely than men to experience adverse reactions to drugs and vaccines. And as a result, eight out of 10 drugs that are removed from market are done so because of their adverse impacts on women. And for men, very effective treatments that have been optimized, especially for men, may not even make it to market or may be removed from market simply because they do not appear to be safe or effective when tested in a mixed sex human sample. Both of these losses could be prevented simply by including female animals when these treatments are being tested at their inception. Why are scientists so fond of the male lab animal, you may ask? What's wrong with the female lab animal? Well, a key reason relates to that great big biological black hole, the menstrual cycle. Yes. Female lab animals have a menstrual cycle, as do the majority of human women for a large portion of their lives. And because of this great big biological black hole menstrual cycle and all the hormonal fluctuations that occur within it, many scientists fear that data obtained from female lab animals will simply be too variable to yield any interpretable results. Scientists have a word for variability in data. We call it noise. Another way of describing noise is variables that are really important, but that we don't really understand, and so we'd much prefer to ignore. Thank you very much. Actually, I don't mind the menstrual cycle being described as noise. I quite like it. You know why it's noisy? Because it has something very important to say. For the past decade, my lab has rallied to reverse the male-focused bias in anxiety treatment research. We are identifying those noisy, female-specific factors that influence animal models of anxiety treatment, and we are translating those findings to clinical trials in women with anxiety disorders. We've found that that great big biological black hole menstrual cycle is a really, really big factor that clinicians should consider when providing women treatment for anxiety disorders. It turns out female rats really depend upon the sex hormone estradiol, which is the main form of estrogen, to regulate fearful emotions. Translating these findings to women with anxiety disorders, we found that women who received treatment during menstrual phases of peak estradiol, like ovulation, showed a faster rate of symptom decline and less symptom relapse in the long term compared to women who received treatment during menstrual phases of low estradiol, like menstruation. We also looked at women using hormonal contraceptives, which stop the menstrual cycle by chronically suppressing the body's natural production of estradiol. It turns out women using hormonal contraceptives showed the poorest response to treatment. Their symptoms declined very slowly and they showed strong relapse of anxiety symptoms in the long term. 80% of women use hormonal contraception at some point in their lives and 20% of women will require treatment for anxiety disorders. And yet, scientists do not wish to be distracted by such noise. I said that this was not a talk about undervalued and uncompensated domestic labour roles. I said that this was not a talk about the underrepresentation of women in art and science. I lied. It's about those stories. 
each of those stories is part of the same story. The same old story where I began with women as the forgotten characters. I have two children, a son and a daughter. I look at my children in the eyes with the knowledge that when they get sick, the medical treatment that they receive is less evidence-based, less optimised for my daughter than for my son. That knowledge does not sit well with me. How does it sit with you?